would you have to do to beat him? What would I have to do to beat Wilder? Get him in the ring and I'll knock him spark out. Get this man off his ass, tell him to shut up. Welcome to Clash of the Titans, one of the most anticipated boxing matches of the year. On one side, we have the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder, with a record of 43 wins with 42 knockouts. And on the other side, we have the former heavyweight champion of the world, Anthony Joshua, one of the best British boxers to ever live. Love him or hate him. Both of these fighters have proven their strength and determination in the ring. But who will come out on top in this historic matchup? This is Boxing Matrix. Enjoy this video. On October 22, 1985, Wilder was born. He and his three younger siblings shared a three-bedroom home in Tuscaloosa's abandoned West End. When Deontay Wilder was only nine years old, his mother left, leaving his father responsible for the family's household tasks. Despite regularly attending church and being taught peace by his father, Wilder had difficulty following these teachings because other children would make fun of him for wearing Walmart shoes and wearing hand-me-down clothing due to his family's financial situation. However, Wilder developed a tough exterior. When Deontay Wilder was 19 years old, his life was turned upside down by the news that his daughter, Naia, was born with spina bifida and her mother informed Wilder that she was leaving him. Struggling with financial issues, even with a job at IHOP, Wilder was in desperate need of a solution. However, Wilder found a way out of his troubles by quickly rising to the top of the boxing world, demonstrating his skills as an amateur with a surprise bronze medal at the 2008 Olympics. Wilder turned pro in November of 2008. He quickly made a name for himself in the professional boxing world, but his best moments will be revealed later. For the time, we have to look at the life of the great heavyweight Anthony Joshua a specimen of a boxer. Joshua grew up in Watford and began boxing at the age of 18 after he was introduced to the sport by his cousin. As an amateur boxer, Joshua had a remarkable career, winning several national titles and becoming a three-time English champion. He also won a gold medal at the 2010 British ABA Championships and a silver medal at the 2011 European Championships. Four years after Wilder, Joshua would represent Great Britain at the London Olympics, where he won a gold medal in the super heavyweight division, defeating Roberto Camarelli of Italy in the final. This victory made Joshua a household name in the UK and cemented his status as one of the most promising heavyweight boxers in the world. After the Olympics, Joshua turned pro, signing with Matchroom Sport and making his professional debut in October 2013. Going again. Always... Some tricks for a rookie. Oh. What is keeping Leo up? He is getting tattooed here and he has to go and it's over. That's what the boss is about. He quickly gained a reputation as a knockout artist, winning his first 13 fights by knockout. Joshua's first fight of big notice was against the Ukrainian monster, Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko was coming off a loss to Tyson Fury and was looking to avenge his defeat by knocking out another British fighter. At the beginning of the fight, Joshua appeared hesitant and cautious, which was unusual for him. However, there was a valid reason for this. Klitschko was a dominant heavyweight champion, known for his exceptional use of the jab, and Joshua knew that he couldn't simply overpower his technically skilled opponent, as he had done in previous fights. Team fights. <laughs> Guys, John Weston's going into this fight. is letting his hands go in, in New York. Harold, how do you have it so far? Telling Klitschko, you're letting him get brave. You're on the It's a good body shot. Following a lackluster fourth round, Joshua adapted a strategy from his experienced adversary, but modified it to his own style. He seized the opportunity at the start of the next round and aggressively attacked with a rapid succession of punches, striking Klitschko with such force that he was knocked down. Joshua trying to hurt very bad. And there he goes. Down goes Klitschko. He just had to remember to go to the body and not run into nothing big himself. Klitschko is throwing a big shot now. A large cut. Oh, good hook by Klitschko. Ready to go in what is a met thin and action oh. full round. By Joshua. Klitschko shot. Another good hook by Klitschko. Right by Oh. Joshua with his hand. Right hook by Klitschko. Right hand by Klitschko. Very fatigued. Let's see who's got something left. Inside. Hard right hand by Blood to start flowing again. Left hook Joshua. Left hook Klitschko. And he's taking more kills right there. Right uh, this would have been a what he's doing right now, Klitschko. That, that's exactly right, Max. 
is giving Joshua the pitch code from Mitchell. There it is. He's back by Joshua. The latter half of the fight shaped up as a test of stamina, endurance, and tactics. Klitschko, despite being 14 years Joshua's senior, looked better prepared to control the late rounds. Eventually, Joshua's power and spirit won out. Team moving his head left to right, throwing for five rounds. He knocked Klitschko and set him up for right now. For Joshua on the letterman score, he's unofficial, and if official judges have to sense that, all of on seven. That's true, but several times before. Like I said, it doesn't mean you go. And, I would, and like we said, if it goes a distance. That would discourage Klitschko. And oh, good right hand by Klitschko. Longer Klitschko jab is for Joshua down one. Oh, big right hand by Joshua to start the round. Oh, Klitschko doesn't want to let Klitschko off the hook. Left hand lands for Body tap. Oh. Deontay Wilder's moment of becoming champion was finally here. He came into the fight against Bermain Stavern with a 32 knockout streak. If he won the belt, he would be the first American to hold it after Haseem Rockman. The first round saw Bermain Stavern in an exceptionally patient mode, throwing very little and nothing of real consequence. Wilder, meanwhile, was being walked down, but stayed working behind his jab and landed a few decent right hands. Through the guard by Wilder and another Stavern early in their fight. And the lead left hook followed. He even told us he was knocked down as a 32 professional fighter. He's used to guys respecting his power. React to this in a few rounds. Now, before yeah, he, coming back and winning that fight. He did. Oh. Having some... Stavern, and there's a right hand by Wilder. And there's another right hand that scores through the guard behind left hook by Stavern. Out the fight. And now loads up with a right hander. There's a one two by the challenger. Another right hand. And now Wilder pouring on the pressure at the battle. And a take. Wilder did rally in the fifth, with Stavern starting fast, but the Alabama native came back and landed clean right hands to take the round. But fatigue once again appeared to be a bit of a factor in round six as well as a wild uppercut that Wilder threw and was countered with a hook from Stavern, who began to hunt the challenger. Left in the fifth, and the last round was a solid punch, and Wilder didn't get by Stavern, misses with the right hand, catches him with the left, Wilder. Now measuring him up, straight right through the guard, while Stavern slips, left hook by Wilder, crowd on its feet. Wilder teeing off on Stavern, through the guard, doesn't want to punch himself up, and there, to the body, downstairs to the body. Very much arm punches right now. Nothing what he's made of. Yeah, absolutely. I think Lead right hand by Wilder. There's a right through the guard. Left and now Wilder pouring the pressure on. And that's where Stavern needs to work. And now he's finally working. The 11th was Stavern's round, with Wilder pot-shotting and trying to stay out of harm's way as much as possible. Stavern appeared to take the 12th too, going to the body early, even though also going to the body much too late. Wilder did his best to smother Stavern's work and hang on for a decision win. Take advantage of Wilder's low hands is because he's been beaten up. Now Stavern finally increases that fatigue. There's the right hand of the ball. Shot him. Not taking a lot of chances. This one going to the 12th, 12th and final round. Official scores with two. Energy in the way we're going to get back to this fight. I guess we can't. The champion Berman's winner. Let's talk to the body. Stavern oh. going to the Preventing him from getting leverage on his own shot. Started with the jab. He finishes it with the jab. Both men were now champions in 2017. Deontay Wilder continued his knockout streak from there on. He was seen as a one-of-a-kind monster in the division, something that we had never seen before. The potential matchup between Wilder and Fury had been talked about and promoted for several years prior to the fight, including by the two fighters themselves on social media. After Fury's return to boxing, a fight between the strongmen was inevitable. Both fighters came out cautiously, with Wilder looking to land his powerful right hand and Fury using his movement and footwork to avoid it. Fury landed a few jabs and straight left hands, but Wilder landed a hard right hand towards the end of the round. Stop, but Fury now tagging this question. Well, one thing he did well in round one, I thought Boy, is it ever. Oh, there's a one-two combination. Especially not slot with the right. Fury in the first few rounds 
collecting data. Of course, Wilder had him there on the ropes for a second. He pivots away from the ropes, and it's Fury. That He's allowed. obviously been programmed to do that. And that he did in his tutu. Al, what about you? Are you at all surprised with the... They have to more for it. Usually he steps... This heavyweight title fight between two undefeated... Okay. ...by the WBC heavyweight champion. In the fourth, Wilder started to become more aggressive, throwing wild punches and looking to land his right hand. Fury continued to box well and landed a few solid punches of his own, letting the champion know that he was in for a fight too. And Fury avoids that. Keep his calm when he's about to throw it. Opponents flummox. Deontay Wilder and Fury now walking down Wilder. The whole fight left him. Tonight, not so. He had the combination yeah. in the round. Point of this championship affair. There's a right hand oh, by Fury. Half remaining the seventh. Oh, yeah. Another strike over the top of the right hand. A Wilder loading up but missing Fury's defense. And again, by Wilder, but again, Fury avoids. Has to find a way to try and make it for Tyson Fury, which is staggering. And that's because Fury is keeping. But oh, Wilder. On the 12th, a miracle happened. Wilder landed a punch so hard to drop Tyson to the canvas, and it seemed that the fight would be over. Fury got up and somehow managed to stay on his feet, landing some big punches of his own with the fight ending in a draw. Four, five, to win. He's been down now a total of three times in his career, but now Wilder beginning to turn the tables. Here comes Fury. Be careful. There are opportunities yeah, to punch himself out. I'm just going to say that more out of my mouth. Exactly what he has to be careful with. At the time, a rematch between the two giants was almost certain, though the fight between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury was also being talked about but was dropped shortly after the rematch with Wilder was official. AJ had lost his titles in 2019 in a slugfest of a fight with Andy Ruiz and was looking to avenge that loss. He came into the fight knowing that if he lost again, his career would go downhill and his chances for a championship would be slim. In the match, Joshua had a strategy to avoid getting into a confrontation with Ruiz, who weighed 15 pounds more at 283 pounds and did not show any sense of urgency in fighting. Joshua prevented Ruiz from getting close enough to punch and did not struggle to get off the ropes. Beautiful ropes. Left eye cut. Good job landed from under Ruiz. Not a bad there. That range. Good left hook. Looking for the right shot as well. And Ruiz in trouble. Jay was caught from a head clash and Ruiz was Fight. He's boxing, lovely jab, Hard straight right hand, lead left hook. She has done so far, Matt, tonight. We're in the temple area. Anthony Joshua's having to win. That's a good, good right, right hand. hand. Really good. The movement's good, but he's also every now and then, every now and then he's got to hit Ruiz. With his... Go for it. Right hand from Ruiz. The pressing close and keep putting the break his feet anyway, but there's certainly the extra stop oh, right hand. Hand. Ruiz only had a few moments when he was throwing significant punches, and even fewer times when he was landing them. Despite his efforts, Ruiz was not successful in restricting Joshua's movements within the ring, and he could only follow Joshua around without being able to cut off his pass. Orlando clean. That was forcing the pace because he's got to be behind here. It's a masterclass from Anthony. Uh, Joshua who's trying to cut the ring up. Quick enough feet really to go on, so he knows he can hurt Andy Ruiz. Looking for the right hand, Joshua. Oh, and it's turned. Attempts to get inside, and the right hand there. And Joshua just unsteady. And here comes Andy Ruiz. Right and a left from Ruiz. I still think he's dangerous. Tony, Joshua. Back on the chin. So Anthony tries to hold him or tie him up. Oh, good. Beautiful. Lovely work from Joshua. Yeah, it is, that's what it was clear that he wasn't quick enough or explosive enough to give Joshua much of a problem. Joshua boxed well, but he did so with precious little resistance from Ruiz, who was slow and uninspired. Going back in the it shows an answer. It's been absolutely brilliant. I'd like to say, 
that improvements on his game from Anthony Joshua. And look how fresh he looks. Roussel from Canada just in front of us. Expect the last one. Oh, big right hand. Be disciplined. Stay on that jab. A gorgeous. Being a good fight. Both guys are cool. Both guys are throwing too much. And it shows you the level of Anthony Joshua. Once again, the heavyweight champion of the world. AJ got the decision victory, and the fight with him and Wilder came closer and closer. If Deontay won the rematch against Tyson Fury, then the fight with AJ would probably be next. But a big upset happened once again. In the first fight between Fury and Wilder, some commentators believed that Fury had performed well enough to take Wilder's heavyweight title. However, doubt still existed as Fury had been knocked down twice during the bout. This led to some uncertainty surrounding the rematch, and bookmasters considered Wilder to be a slight favorite in the upcoming fight. Fury started the fight in an aggressive manner, taking the initiative by jabbing and pushing Wilder back. Wilder's attempts to attack were ineffective as Fury successfully blocked them and responded with his own more precise punches. He's been able to do that. That's why he's trying to be more Fury delivered a powerful right punch that knocked Wilder down in the third round. Wilder struggled to regain his balance and was knocked down again, although the second one was not counted as an official knockdown. Wilder was visibly injured, bleeding, and appeared to be in a disoriented state. No knockdown! No knockdown! There is exhausted Fury. Down goes Wilder again for the second time in reckless. A right hand by Fury. Fury with a right to the body. Fury kept attacking Wilder around the ring until the towel was thrown into the ring to stop the fight, while Wilder was cornered and unable to defend himself. It seemed that AJ versus Tyson Fury was the fight to go, as they were both champions. Though the world shut down some months later and the big fights were all postponed, Wilder had activated the rematch clause and a third fight with Fury was agreed. AJ, on the other hand, was matched against Kubrat Pulev, which he dominated with ease. The third and final fight between Fury and Wilder was a slugfest. Knockouts from both fighters and truck-like punches. In the end, Fury snatched the victory by a knockout, and Wilder's career from now on would be at bay. As Tyson was now king of the division, Joshua would seem like the guy that would probably be the next one to fight but it was ordered that Anthony would have to face Oleksandr Usyk to defend his belts. And as we all know, that didn't end very well. It's, it's oh, 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 Joshua was champion no more, and his final shot at the title was the rematch with Usyk, which left him once again outboxed by the Ukrainian and with no belts in his hands. A fight with Deontay seemed pretty valid at that point. Both were coming off of losses, and the fight could be billed as raw power versus skills. Matchroom CEO Eddie Hearn has confirmed that the fight is official and will take place in December in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The fight will be the co-main event of probably the Fury vs. Usyk fight. But how will the fight go? Deontay will probably start by throwing his snappy jab and looking for that right cross to land, while AJ will be on the defense, trying to analyze and look for openings in Wilder. It is really difficult to predict the outcome of this fight, but one thing we can say is that if Wilder's punches connect with Joshua's chin, it might be over sooner than we think. This is Boxing Matrix. Thank you for watching.